by, make sure you have these doodle notes in front of you. We thought we would try something new with notes. This way you can write all over them, draw all over them, make them yours. But as we start out, the most important thing today is for you to put your name in this space in the very center of your doodle notes. Feel free to use markers or flare pens or crayons, whatever you want to do. Make it look festive, make it look interesting. Color in the shapes if you want to, whatever you want to do. But today we are talking about similar triangles. We've talked a lot about similarity, but today it's just about triangles. So let's talk first about how we would say this out loud. If we were talking about these two triangles over here, and that is what we're talking about today, we would say triangle EFG. Please write what I am so you don't forget is, and I'm going to write it very large so you remember the word, similar to triangle, and this is what I would say out loud, J, K, up. Please notice that E, F, G, if I look here, I start, start at the bottom left, went to the top of the hanger, and bottom right. E, F, G, it's set in a certain order. Look at this, E, F, G, E, F, G. I, rep I talk about it being similar to J, K, L. They are set in the same order. You mention the corresponding letters in the same order so that we know they are similar. I want to point out something else too. We've talked about this slightly in class, but to mention it again, please notice this little symbol here. It's called the similar. That's the symbol we're going to use for similarity or for similar. So it kind of looks like an S that's been flipped or reflected and rotated. And I want you to write it on top so we don't forget. This means similar. Now, when we use this symbol, we talk about triangles. We actually use the triangle symbol. We draw a triangle. We say triangle EFG is similar to triangle JKL. So that's how I say these symbols. So this is how we say it out loud. This is how we write it. So let's talk now about these two triangles that we have over here. And yes, we have an adult clothes hanger being compared to a baby clothes hanger. They're the same thing. Obviously, one has been dilated. So let's try to name the corresponding angles. And I will start with the J because J and E were mentioned first. They're written in the same order, so those must be the corresponding angles. And that means angle J, and by the way, you write it as like a little angle, almost like a less than sign and almost like an L, but it's just slightly different. Angle J is, uh-oh, what is this symbol? This means congruent. So let's write that over here to the side. This symbol here means congruent. I think we all know that in a dilation and in any rigid motion as well, the angles remain congruent. So let's talk about some other angles. Angle K, I'm going to put two arcs there to show that angle K and angle F are also corresponding and congruent. Let's pick another color. Did I pick the wrong? Okay, angle L, I'm going to use three arcs for that so we can differentiate them. Angle L is congruent to angle G. Okay, those are the angles, and the angles are always going to be congruent, always. Now, sadly, I'm going to have to erase a little bit so I have some space. So if you haven't written it, pause the video. I'm going to just erase in here a little bit so we have more space to work in. Um, the next thing I want you to notice is that side JK is not, is not congruent to side EF, but they should be in the same ratio as all the other side, corresponding sides of both triangles. So I'm going to write JK, the ratio of JK to EF equals the ratio of KL, KL, to FG equals the ratio of JL to EG. 
all of those ratios would be the same, the exact same. I'm going to pause the video so I can scroll up. Don't forget, corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. Let's write the symbol again. It's an equal sign with a similar squiggle on top. My similar squiggle is not too good. Corresponding sides are proportional. When we say proportional, we mean they are in the same ratio. Similar triangles have the same shape, but not always the same size. Oh, that's a Z. Sorry about that. Not always the same size. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go down below and we're going to talk about some of the ratios here. So if you notice, in this big triangle is a smaller triangle. And we know that if I take this part here, 6, and I compare it to the entire length, 8, I should have the exact same ratio as I would if I take the small side, 5, and compare it to the total, which is 7.2. Grab your calculator right now. I'm going to pause the video. See if you can decide by dividing 6 by 5, if it has the same divisor or dividend as 8, or oh my gosh, quotient as 8 divided by 7.2. Try it right now. Sorry, my work raced when I paused the video. Of course it did. But I had these two ratios, 6 over 8 and... Um, let's see, 5 over 7.2. Are these the same? Well, when I divided, I found out that this is 1.1 times less, and this was 1.2 less. So are they? No. Put a line through it. Not similar. Not similar. Let's try it on this one. Oh, the tricky part of these triangles, and it's fine if they get rotated, but that means we need to identify the corresponding parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick AB right here. And I notice that B is at the top of this one arc. So I know I'm also looking at this side, LM. So it looks like I have three to four. I'll pick a different color so you can see. And I'm going to pick this next side, which goes between the two angles that are marked, which is 6, and it looks like 8. Ooh, this should be a nice, easy one. Are these proportional? Well, of course, because 3 goes into 6 twice. 4 goes into 8 twice. So if I multiply them each by 2, I get the same amount. So they are in relation to each other. They are proportional. They are similar. Notice it says the third angle pair must be congruent as well because of, I'm going to pause this for a second, let's think about it. Because of, did you know? Of course you didn't know. It's the triangle, oh my goodness, sum theorem. Yeah, I wonder if we'll hear that too much. Now two sails on a sailboat are similar triangles. The large sail has sides that are 10. I'm going to draw, we always draw pictures when we can. 10, 26, and 24. I'm going to do 10, 26 at the long side, and 24 here. The shortest side of the small sail is 6. Okay. No, I should always label. Of course, we know that. Find the perimeter of the small sail. Well, this is kind of nice because they already told us they're similar. All that I need to do is set up a ratio for each. I know 6 is to 10, and I'm trying to find out, let's say, let's call this B and let's call this C. I'm trying to find side B first, and I know that that corresponds to side that is 24. Well, if I divide 10 into 24, it goes in 2.4 times. So I have to take 6 
and multiply that by 2.4. I'll do it like this. 6 times 2 is 12. That's 14. Okay, so that's kind of yucky. 14.4. And side C is also going to have to be 2.4 times less than 26. So it's 26 divided by 2.4. That's going to go in once. And that doesn't go in very nicely. Is it going to 20? No. Bring in another zero. And we get something kind of crazy here. Let me look on my calculator. Okay, so I'm hoping you calculated it as well. But the two triangles look like this. We've got 10, 24, 26. That's the big one. The smaller one is 6. 14.4 and 15.6. Now all that I have to do is add up all three sides to find the perimeter because that's what the question was asking. And I should get perimeter equals 36 meters. Remember these were all in meters. Make sure you have that. There are questions on the back for you to practice. 